best in daughters, sisters, and wives. They're gonna change our lives. Big women, big girls. They'll make a better world. Invest in her. And now here's your host, Catherine Gray. Hi, and welcome to the Invest in Her podcast series where we always feature phenomenal female founders and funders. And today we have on the incredible founder of Lifeograph, Dia Wilson. Hi, Dia. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for inviting me, Catherine. It's an honor to be on your podcast. Thank you so much. Um, honor to have you here. Uh, and I want to mention right up front that you're one of the seven finalists for our She Angels project, which is our pitch fest and the TV series that we're looking to launch. And you are one of the seven finalists that our uh, She Angel investors selected because they thought you had such a phenomenal idea. And I can't wait to share it with our audience. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate uh, your vote of confidence. Yeah, you know, it always blows me away, the ingenious ideas that women have. And, you know, um, every week I say, uh, you know, they say the Dalai Lama says the Western women will change the world. And I say, how are we going to do that unless we have funding? And, you know, as I always say, we have less than 15% of funding that we get. So how are we going to level that playing field? And I believe it's by telling people about women like yourself that have come up with ingenious ideas that need to be funded. And hopefully that not only will men invest in it, but that women will invest in it, that will we'll cultivate through this platform more women investors. We need more women at the investing table, right? I agree. I agree. And I, I, um, I couldn't be more um, excited about the, the work that you are doing in uh, kind of um, broadcasting uh, the, the need uh, for more women to, uh, to get into the uh, um, funding train, so to speak. Uh, because right now, uh, there are many opportunities for women to invest in other women. Uh, until a few years ago, um, unless you had a big chunk of money, you could not uh, invest in startups. Uh, now, with the uh, equity crowdfunding uh, platforms that are out there, women can invest as little as $100 in another woman's um, startup. And that has opened a breadth of uh, possibilities uh, for women supporting women with just $100. It adds up. And uh, that way, you know, we are all in this together. We are, uh, you know, showing solidarity with other women. And uh, statistically, women uh, founders, they uh, return to uh, investors uh, more money than their uh, male counterparts. So it's a good investment decision to invest in women. Absolutely. And I am thrilled that you are talking about equity crowdfunding. It's a topic that I don't think we've addressed uh, yet. And it's so fascinating. And I love that you're doing it with Lifeograph and that anyone can invest any amount of money and have uh, equity in your company. And uh, a lot of people don't know that it was only a, a recently, a couple years ago, uh, that uh, small um, investors could do equity funding. They actually changed the laws. It used to be that, you know, I think you needed a net worth of a million dollars in order to have equity funding in a company. Um, and then they realized that for small business startups, it was necessary to create this new law that opened it up to individual investors. Like you said, for as little as 50 or $100, they could have an equity slice of a company. And gives an opportunity to fund a lot more uh, companies as well. Uh, what made you, let's talk about what Lifeograph is, because I'm sure everyone is curious to learn about it. It's so fascinating. And then we'll talk about how people can invest in it and more about equity crowdfunding and what that means. Uh, so Lifeograph, people are spending so much time trying to find out about somebody that they want to be a customer or a client, a client, a partner, uh, a distributor, whatever. And uh, they're going to Google and they're going to LinkedIn and they're going to all these various organizations trying to find the right connection. 
and you have created a patented algorithm to address this situation so that you have a one-stop shop to find who you need to find. Um, and let's talk about how you did that because you say it's like wiki meets LinkedIn. So a lot of people might not even know what Wikipedia is. So let's start with that and how only 1% of people are, are even found on that. And, and, and let's address that issue. So let's talk about what is Wikipedia and how is yours a combination of all of these things? Nobody can tell them better than you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. Um, so um, Lifeograph is the wiki of people. I uh, have seen the need of uh, having information about people and companies in just the one uh, spot. Uh, about um, um, one third of, uh, of people's uh, time is spent on trying to find information about someone else. And then you go to Google and you find you know, millions of search results that you might have to sift through. Then um, you go to LinkedIn and you wanna find maybe you're connected with um, 150 people that you have mutual connections with, right? Uh, you would, in order to get a, uh, uh, a warm introduction, you'd have to, to send 150 emails hoping that somebody from those mutual connections will know the person you want to reach. Um, not only creates spam for the people that uh, you might not even know, uh, right? Out of, uh, out of all your LinkedIn connections, how many do you really know, you know? Uh, but uh, on Lifeograph, what we try to do, we map people's uh, uh, real life connections. So whether they're uh, partners, uh, whether they're co-founders, whether they're a client of each other, whether they have provided services, uh, even maybe they were co-speakers at an event or, you know, by virtue of this uh, uh, podcast, you and I, Catherine, will be connected on Lifeograph and we will have a, uh, a, you know, a connection that way. And um, so that's, that's what we're trying to do. One of the best uh, uh, cases and use cases for Lifeograph is um, events. Imagine uh, we used to go to in-person events and um, do networking, right? Who, who did you end up talking to? It was most likely somebody was sitting next to your chair or maybe you're sitting in line to get your slice of pizza. And that, might, that was a very random encounter. You might end up with five, 10 business cards, but are you sure that those were the people that you should really talk to, right? We all have very limited time. And uh, what if you had a list of the five top, top five or 10 people that you should really meet at this uh, event with 100 people? Wouldn't that be so much easier for everybody? Wouldn't that be so much more rewarding and creating more meaningful relationships instead of you know, uh, being stuck talking to someone that you know you, you might not have things in common? So, I, I think uh, that's uh, brilliant. I mean, and, and also to really who in this day and age wants to go and hand out uh, business cards and take in business cards. It's really becoming so passe. Is And I actually thought about printing some new business cards and I thought, why, where am I going? Who am I going to see? Yeah. You know, but, uh, and then who wants them? You just stack them up and then you have a stack of business cards. This makes so much sense to me, uh, especially being someone that goes to a lot of events. And I agree with you, you know, often there, yeah, there may be people that you want to meet at that event, but you may not be seated with them and you may not be, um, you might not encounter them that day. More than likely you won't. Um, so I think this is really a, a brilliant idea. Uh, who doesn't want to get directly to the people that they need to without uh, a lot of fluff? And like you said, most of the time you don't really know the people on LinkedIn. Uh, and, and if you do, they're some friend of a friend of a friend. And also what I like about Lifeograph is um, so often the person that you actually do need to meet is in your circle uh, uh, of people that know people, but you don't even know it. You're not even aware of it. And that's what I like about Lifeograph. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, and it has become even harder now with the virtual events, right? Yeah. I mean, right now you, you cannot build a relationship, um, but um, imagine a, a post on Lifeograph where all the virtual attendees get tagged and that way you get to see who they are, what they do, what's their interests, what their skills. You can click a button to life or match them, meaning that, hey, you know, I like your background. I want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And then uh, we can also recommend 
uh, matches for you based on all your attendees. So you can go to all these events and accumulate all these people that you have uh, attended events with and be able to filter, you know, you know, imagine you want to see, okay, who in my network has a C-level uh, title, right? And be able to click a button and see a list. It's a very powerful tool and we're, we're so excited to share it with the world. And let's really like make people understand like what is the difference between this and LinkedIn? Because people might say, well, it kind of sounds like LinkedIn, sure. but LinkedIn, you can't go and put in what that you could put in on Lifeograph. Sure, sure. So, um, and I get this question all the time. So first of all, you know, um, let's go to the root uh, of what Lifeograph is. And the Lifeograph is a wiki. Um, is less so in like a recruiting platform like LinkedIn um, and uh, or a content uh, you know distribution. Um, so meaning that uh, on Lifeograph, everyone can uh, add um, a new person or company. Everyone can go in and edit. Right now, um, people say, "Well, what if someone says something that I don't want?" and um, Right now, people can go on LinkedIn and say something that, that you don't want. Nobody prevents anybody to say something that they don't want. The difference is right. on LinkedIn, you will not be able to go in and correct, you know, correct a, a, a mistake or a typo or something malicious that somebody said. You will not be able to do that. On Lifeograph, you have control over your profile. If somebody adds something that you don't like, you just go in and edit it and poof, it's all done. Everybody receives notifications when, when uh, changes are done to their profile. But keeping, you know, let's go back to the example of the event, 100 people at, the, at this particular event. One person can add the 100 people and tag them in that particular event. So 100 people don't have to spend the time to go in and try to tag themselves or whatnot, right? So that's the wiki model. One person can do the work for everybody else. Uh, the other uh, differentiation between us and LinkedIn is we connect the dots between companies as well. So we build this uh, digital map of relationships uh, between companies and uh, you know who's a client of who, who's, uh, who is a distributor for who, uh, who's, uh, who invested in what company, right? And then this builds this amazing um, virtual map for uh, company relationships. So when it's time to go find a new client or whatnot, you got to see, okay, who, who else, you know, or um, uh, who, who, what other service providers uh, do they have? Uh, imagine an up and coming startup and they add, let's say Microsoft as a uh, client on their lifeograph. Well, anybody who visits Microsoft's lifeograph will see this itty bitty tiny startup as a service provider to Microsoft. So all of a the sudden their credibility will be boosted, right? And uh, so for up and coming startups that, that, that start to add clients uh, uh, to their lifeograph, it's a, it's a huge boost of uh, credibility and uh, like uh, any startup, track record uh, helps bring more business. So Lifeograph will help you tracking that uh, track record. I love that. And so like I was thinking, like, let's say you have an idea for a product, you're an entrepreneur, and you don't know where to get it manufactured. You could go and look up somebody who created a similar one and see what manufacturer they used. Exactly, exactly. That's so that such a good sense. example. That's uh, such a good example. So anybody can go to lifeograph.com and put and create a profile, right? And yes. I know that, you know, just last year you went from 500,000 to 7 million uh, profiles. 8 .1. Yeah, we have 8.1 yeah. now. Oh, over 8 million now. Wow. <laughs> that is fantastic. What incredible growth. Yeah. Um, what gave you this idea? Well, uh, Dia, where are you from? Well, I'm a Romanian and uh, I came to the U.S. Uh, with uh, just a suitcase and a scholarship uh, to do um, uh, a law degree. So uh, at the root, I'm a, I'm a lawyer, a um, reformed lawyer, as I say. <laughs> we won't and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> So after law school, I worked, um, I got a master in laws and then I worked at Microsoft uh, for a little bit before moving to Silicon Valley because I've always been very passionate about technology and what technology can do to help people. Um, and uh, so I worked at the PricewaterhouseCoopers, you know, a top, uh, uh, you know, Fortune 100 company. 
And uh, then I decided that, that, you know, I'm a people person. And so I like to, to build networks. I like to, to get immersed in networks. I decided to go do an MBA to, um, you know, kind of broaden my, uh, um, my network and also to learn about um, business and um, other things that I was passionate about. So I was lucky enough, I was uh, accepted into the uh, Wharton uh, School of Business. Wow. And uh, I, uh, I uh, completed my MBA. Then I moved back to Silicon Valley and um, I've done startups ever since. But at core, I'm a networker. I love people. You know, our tagline is, it's all about the people. And I believe that everything in this life happens uh, because someone said yes um, in, uh, or no, right? Sometimes a no is a, <laughs> is a blessing in disguise. But uh, we all depend on each other. We all uh, need each other. We all need to help each other. And the, my biggest uh, rule for building such a big network and being a super connector in Silicon Valley is, uh, you know, always try to help before you ask for help. Oh, I'm a big believer in that. I, I agree with you 100%. It's not just about what can you do for me, but what can I do for you? Exactly. Um, and there's such joy in that. Uh, I think you and I uh, speak the same language because I know there's a real joy in connecting people. Yes. You know? Yes. When you put somebody, I get, with somebody and it helps them to, you know, grow their business or launch yeah. their idea, there's no, no better feeling. Uh, everybody gets joy. You do and they do and the recipient does. So it, I agree. I agree. And I had all this, yeah, I had all this relationship in my mind and knew who to match with who. And I've realized that not everybody has uh, uh, the, uh, the time or resources uh, that I put over, you know, uh, decades into my network. So what if uh, everybody combines their own little networks and then all of a sudden we, we, we know the shortest path. Imagine Google Maps for relationships, right? And uh, you, you add a little bit here, a little bit there, and then all of a sudden you see what's your shortest path to someone you want to reach. I like what you just said, a Google Maps of a relationships. Yeah. That, that, that's a cool analogy. Yeah. Um, and, and Wikipedia, uh, for those that don't know, you know, very few people can be featured on that, uh, right? And so a anybody can be featured on Lifeagraph and it opens it up to just a lot more people. And so it's not so limited to just high prof profile people. Yeah. Um, I think it's a wonderful idea. I know with every project I'm working on, it's always, how do I get to this person? How do I reach that person? Uh, so I think it's a phenomenal idea. Um, how have you found pitching as a woman? Because I know it's mostly male investors out there and that seems to be a challenge to a lot of women. It is why we get less than 15% of funding because the decision makers are often men and don't always identify you know, with the idea or the product or the person. Uh, let's face it, people invest in themselves. So uh, someone that they recognize and connect with. And, you know, when you're pitching an all-male lineup, it's, it can be tough for a woman. That's why I know at Invest in Her and my She Angels project that we really perpetuate more women need to invest in women. We need to have more angel investors that are females. And, um, that's something that uh, I know we're, we're both working on is to uh, yeah. initiate that. So this equity crowdfunding in your company uh, is a wonderful way to, for many women to dip their toe in and start being an investor in women. And uh, of course they can start with Lifeagraph. <laughs> Thank you, yes. <laughs> so equity crowdfunding, how does that work? What company do you go through? Uh, and, and how does that work? Once a person uh, invests in your company, let's say $100, $1,000, $50,000, whatever they can, they have uh, shares in your company, right? That's what equity is, equity crowdfunding. Yes. So, um, you know, I have all this network of um, angels and VCs, and yet... Uh, for Lifeograph, I, I chose uh, to go with crowdfunding, right? So it's like, why? Well, uh, there's many benefits to crowdfunding. And um, by nature, Lifeograph is a crowdsourced platform, right? We, we tend to reach out uh, to our community to add content, to connect the, the dots between each other. And uh, I found the crowdfunding to be fascinating because uh, you know, for example, up to now, we have uh, over 650 investors in Lifeograph. 
Well, guess what? Uh, if I went to pitch uh, to a, a VC panel and to a VC firm, I might have uh, two or three you know, investment firms putting money into Lifeograph. Will I have 650 people who will become my ambassadors, my marketers, uh, people who send me referrals, who promote my uh, posts on social media? No, so it's a very powerful tool, especially if you have a community of, of people around you and fans and uh, already uh, customers. Uh, it's a very powerful tool for uh, anybody to, to raise money and in particular for women. Uh, I agree that uh, as a woman, uh, we are a little bit at a disadvantage um, because indeed um, investors tend to um, work by pattern recognition and they tend to interact mostly uh, with the male counterparts. So, um, I mean, I know some investors, they said, you know, I would, I would invest anyone that kind of reminds me of the, my younger self, right? Mm -hmm. And that is a huge disadvantage for us. Um, I want to put a call out there though for women founders as well. I find that uh, they want to start pitching only when they have the perfect website, when they have uh, the customers, when they have everything, all the ducks in the row. And that's not how uh, male founders do. Male founders tend to go earlier, tend to ask for more money, tend to um, um, be okay with getting more rejection. Uh, so I want to instill a sense of courage for women to go out there and start pitching and uh, don't be afraid and you're gonna get no's. Uh, Amazon Bezos, uh, he got, uh, he pitched his idea to over a hundred investors. He got over a hundred no's before, before he got his money. Well, would Amazon be around? No. So don't be afraid to, to get rejected and uh, have some kind of CRM uh, system, even if it's a Google sheet and kind of add, you know, first try to, to look out for investors, you know, set, um, do your research on, on the investors that you want to reach. Uh, make sure that uh, you do a, a thorough research because you don't want to bombard people that, that don't invest in your sector, right? That's why Lifeograph is good for you to kind of do a little bit of a research. What kind of companies they, do they invest? What kind of uh, interests uh, these uh, VC firms or angel groups have, right? Because you can look at their portfolio companies and we extract the, the industries uh, that uh, those companies operate in, right? If you go pitch, uh, if you are a software company and you pitch to a life science investors, uh, it's a waste of time for, for all of them. And investors appreciate when you do your homework and you know what, uh, what you're talking about. So, you know, set uh, your investors into three groups, you know, one that uh, is kind of like a long shot, maybe your ideal investors, but you know, you might not get that. Then the second one is kind of middle ground. And the, sec the, uh, the um, first uh, group that uh, you should reach out to is someone that's like, if they say yes, okay, if, uh, if not, you know, I'll, I'll just move on. Because with each pitch, you're gonna improve your pitch. You're gonna improve uh, how you present your idea. You're gonna hear more objections. So you're gonna know how to address them later, right? If you start with your top uh, uh, VCs that you wanna reach out to or investors, then you kind of burn your bridges if, if you didn't go through the process to kind of learn uh, what, uh, what the investors are looking for and how by the time you get to your top choice investor, you're gonna be so well prepared. So as a woman, don't be afraid to get no, uh, go out there and, uh, uh, and pitch. Uh, another thing is um, investors, many of them require warm introductions. And this is a huge, uh, huge impediment to, to women getting funded. Um, I see, you know, when I did tech events, because I've organized uh, hundreds of, uh, of uh, tech events, um, I would go and I would say that 90% of people there were male and maybe 10% uh, uh, women. And on top of it, most of the women, they were stick together and they were talk to each other instead of maybe going out there and talking to, um, to male. So that kind of narrows their circle, right? So as, as women founders, I urge you, go out there and network with your male counterparts. You never know who's, who's your next investor. Uh, just to give you a, a fun fact, I was at the, an event at the Microsoft uh, a few years ago and I was leaving. I had to leave early for some other commitment and I was so bummed because like, gosh, look how great event it is. I was making lots of connection. And so as I leave, 
I see this person uh, looking on his phone, you know, you can tell that he was a little bit um, kind of um, awkward uh, in, in his corner, kind of didn't know too many people, right? So I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go and say hello and introduce myself and um, right, always reach out to people. Well, guess what? It turns out he was my first investor in Lifeograph. And uh, you never know the chance encounter, but you need to, to be brave and go out there and, and seek out uh, to talk to people. When you go to networking events, uh, try to go to a, a group of three people. And I tell you why. There will always be two of them that kind of talk and interact with each other and lock eyes. So the third person is more like a passive, you know, um, uh, spectator. So they'll be delighted to, to have somebody to interact in a pair with you. So always try to find groups of three people and uh, get in discussion with them. This is great advice, wonderful. And um, if somebody wanted to do uh, equity crowdfunding for their project, where would they begin? Like what is a company they could align with to set this up and learn about it? Sure, sure. And there are several um, platforms like that. First, um, let's make the distinction between the rewards crowdfunding and equity crowdfunding. Uh, the uh, rewards crowdfunding is more like the Kickstarter and Indiegogo. And uh, they, uh, what you do is you put your product or service there and the uh, people buy it. Um, basically, they, they give you money for uh, delivery later right they will not or sometimes their, they just give you money or money yeah yeah, yeah. sometimes yeah, it's a donation yeah. money That's sometimes right. it's for a product That's right yeah. exactly right yeah. so and then you get perks right like if you put money on kickstarter for a for a movie or something then you might get front row sitting or things like that uh, mm -hmm. so that is different than equity crowdfunding uh, equity crowdfunding was introduced uh, um, after the jobs act and allows anybody, whether they're or not accredited investors, to put um, money into startups. And uh, there are several uh, platforms out there, just uh, to give you an example, there is uh, uh, WeFunder, there is StartEngine, there is Republic, uh, several others. Uh, these are kind of the main ones. And um, so what you do first, you have to apply and you have to be uh, approved. Uh, some of them require that you have a lead investor. Some of them don't. Um, you have to show some kind of attraction uh, because everybody's uh, trying to raise money, but they want to make sure that you have some, uh, some proof uh, that uh, whatever you're building, uh, people are, uh, are going to uh, want. And um, so you're going to have to uh, review your financials. So there's some cost associated with uh, crowdfunding. You have to review your financials by an accountant, although there is an exception uh, for the first, um, um, if you raise under 250000 you might be able to launch your campaign before you have to present those uh, reviewed financials, but eventually you're going to have to do them as well. And then um, you also will have to have a nice... Uh, uh, video kind of showing the benefits of uh, what you build, kind of a video pitch. Um, you're going to have to create your um, page on uh, the crowdfunding uh, platform, right? So there will be some marketing involved in it. And, um, you know, if you're accepted, then good for you. You're going to be able to uh, launch. Uh, there is a filing with the SEC, the Security Exchange Commission, and uh, a lot of it is handled by, uh, by the platform itself. Uh, but if you have a lawyer, you can also um, get uh, them to help you out. Now, in terms of um, the terms, uh, you get to decide the terms. If you have a lead investor, you're going to talk about the, the terms with them. And when I talk about terms, it's like, okay, are you going to uh, do straight equity? Are you going to do convertible note? Are you going to do a safe? Uh, what is your valuation or valuation cap? Um, are you going to offer any uh, perks to the investors or any early bird um, um, opportunities for them to invest? Are you going to offer a, a, a discount or interest? So there's many things to, to think about. And then once your campaign is launched, uh, you have a uh, you know, few months to, to raise your money. Uh, usually uh, these uh, companies require about $50,000 uh, minimum uh, to, to raise on their platform. And um, the maximum is about uh, a million 70,000. Uh, although the uh, Congress has passed a law that uh, um, I think it's still in the process 
uh, of uh, allowing companies to raise um, a little over $5 million on equity crowdfunding, which I think it's, it's great. Um, and and it, sounds, it sounds perfect for someone like uh, uh, your product, which is this huge network. It makes perfect sense because all of your investors, I think you said you had 600 plus, um, all feel like they own a piece of it and then they have a vested interest in it. And then of course they wanna bring other people in and tell them about it. And I think that's a really smart, cool way that you uh, <laughs> took that path. Indeed, it makes perfect indeed. sense. Yeah, and I love when I uh, when I uh, receive inquiries say, "Hey, when are you guys doing your next crowdfunding campaign?" You know, I, I want to invest more. I want to get a bigger portion of the company. So that uh, that is great to hear, and uh, that uh, our investors are uh, you know very excited about what we do. And my biggest uh, joy is to read their testimonials because we have a question here: Why did you invest in Lithograph? And to kind of read what uh, what they believe in how much inspiration we give them and how, how they believe of life grab that that makes our work harder and longer hours and um, put the, all the sweat and tears necessary to make it a success. Well, very cool. Thanks for sharing all this with us. Invaluable information. I hope everyone will go to lifeograph.com to set up a profile so you can participate in this amazing networking uh, opportunity and uh, that also you will look on the site to be an equity crowdfunding investor in Dia's awesome idea. So uh, thank you so much for being on and sharing this knowledge with everyone and wishing you all the best. It's really such an amazing idea and want to see it blossom and grow. And um, just remember everybody, invest in her. Investing in women helps make the world a little better place. Make it Thank a great you, day. Catherine. Thank you so much. I really appreciate being on your podcast. Thank, Thank you. you. Our theme music was created and produced by Lindsay Tomasic.